Hi there, me, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke assaulter. So I tried to do a video on Return to Week, week 7. Didn't upload successfully, so I'm going to do a bunch of videos today. So last week I did a Return to Work of Week 7 because last week went to my 7th week. This week will be my 8th week as opposed to rolling it into two videos and making it like half an hour. I'll try to stick with the 50-minute format. So last week, treating last week as the 7th week, uh, for seven hours a day, went back to work. I was working seven hours a day. Um, now one of the, I'm still having really bad problems with ambient noise at times. <laughs> I'll get into something about that later. Um, performing fairly well. I'm still in the first quartile, meaning the top 25% of all agents. Uh, that is confirmed for the month of January and should pretty much be confirmed for the month, month, month of February. So I'm performing significantly better than I thought it would. Um, I did notice on the seventh week I would be more tired uh, than I was previous weeks, but then again I'm, I'm at work for seven hours, uh, which means now I was accruing one break and one lunch. Um, and I had to, I had to have a, a, someone remind me that the first week, or first two weeks, I did three hours a day for five days a week. The second two weeks, I did four hours a day for two weeks. And then the fifth week, I went to five hours. The sixth week, six. Seventh week, seven. Right? And this past week, I just finished eight. The first week, week and a half, I went back to work. I was a basket case when I got home. Absolutely spun. Um, and then I built up my tolerance. And then... I would nap less. Well, the week when I did seven hours, I was pretty much cooked almost every night. And that's a thing. Now, what I do know is this. <clears throat> Excuse me. My initial plan, the one I'd thought up, the, the brilliant master plan, was just go back to work and suck it up. Get into the trenches, get stuck in, get the work done. That was totally my plan. Had I done that, I would have been on my chin strap in short order. I would have probably been evacuated by ambulance due to a panic attack or something else. Um, and I would probably be back on a leave of absence right now. If it was not for my wonderful physiotherapist, if it was not for my therapist, therapist, who's a, a brilliant and skilled individual. And if it wasn't for the young lady that's sharing my life and has been there for the good days, the bad days, the terrible days after my stroke, um, these three wonderful women all said, you're an idiot. That's a really bad idea. Um, I know you're stubborn. I know you're determined. I know you want to face this head on. Had they not shook some sense into me and slapped me upside the head. Not here, because here's the damage part. They usually would hit like here, not the face. That's the money maker, right? So it's, it's they, they would more, yeah. So had they not shaken me to my senses, I would have done myself more damage than harm. So just a caveat, for those of you that are considering and you're ready, able, willing to go back to work and your clinical team will sign off on you going back to work, and just consider going back to work will be the largest stressor you're going to have um, outside your home. A couple of reasons. Uh, one, you're not on your own schedule. right? When you're on a leave of absence, you're not really on a schedule, but you're on your own schedule. You kind of do things when you want to do them, how you want to do them, where you want to do them, for as long as you want to do them until you decide to stop, for whatever reason you decide to stop. If you go to work, you show up when they tell you to. You get to leave when they tell you to, um, unless you're sick, of course. Um, you take your breaks when they tell you to. You take your lunch when they tell you to. I'll be honest, that's a challenge. Um, now I work in a I work in a call center. I work for a large telecommunications company here in Canada. I'm a technical support representative. I assist customers with various technical issues, be it home phone, TV, internet, 
um, email, a whole bunch of stuff. So I, I'm a bit of a geek. Um, call centers can be noisy. Um, I still have extreme difficulty with the ambient noise around me. I see my doctor next week for a doctor's note uh, so I can get a proper actual noise canceling headset. Once that's underway, um, I've tried to muddle through for two months just to see if it would get better. It, it's it's not getting better. I was I was kind of hoping I could inoculate myself that just by exposing myself to it, by um, working through it, um, in some cases suffering in silence. Yeah, it, it's it's it, it's not working. So I, I need to get a proper positive seal, spring loaded, hard shell kind of headset. So I'll get a note for that and. My employer will provide it to me, and that should make things better. <laughs> I've done my research, um, and I hope we can come to a common agreement. Um, I did have to take two days off last week. Uh, one day was more for weather. I live at the south end of northern Ontario or the north end of southern Ontario, and we got a wee bit of snow, so one day was due to weather, and I just didn't feel safe walking in that. Uh, also... Uh, someone at work had an air horn and it went off on the floor. I don't know why. I just know the air horn went off and my brain immediately just, it was like someone poured an apalm on my brain. So that was a bit disheveling. Um, yeah, it took a lot of restraint not to go up to that individual and ask them, what the fuck are you doing? Um, I also did what I could do to stay at work. Um, and I, I stayed the day, probably should have gone home. Uh, but immediately right after that, my speech problems came out, right? They just came out. There's not much I could do to hide it. Um, but that being said, all in all, the last, the week, week seven, where I did seven hours a day, wasn't a bad week. Um, I still have anxiety when I go into the building. That's just a thing. Um, that's because where it's where I had my stroke. <laughs> I still get anxiety. Um, and then I had in a moment during week seven. Uh, a lot of you have seen my Amber Alert outrage video. Uh, that happened, and I'm I'm sorry it had the outcome it did with the young lady passing away, and then her father deciding to self-select to take himself out of the picture. He. He uh, self-inflicted gunshot wound that he committed to himself before he was arrested by the police. So, I wanted to make that video. I got home. I figured out how using the editing program that came with my laptop. Because right now, I've only been using the camera on my laptop and the editing software that came with my laptop. Uh, at this moment, I can't afford... It's just not a financial reality of uh, buying a better camera or investing in new software. And that is not in any way uh, an invitation or a request for money to be sent me, sent to me. I'm not looking to be anyone. I don't, I'm not going to give you my PayPal because I don't even have one right now. Um, I don't have a Patreon. I'm not looking for donations. And I'm also uh, pity. I'm not, I don't, not in a pity. None will be accepted and nor is none wanted. So I'm not, this is not a request. Oh, I'm going to start a GoFundMe. <coughs> That's not this. I just can't afford it. This is not a reality right now. When I can afford it, um, and it's sensible to do so, I will buy a better camera. I will get better editing software. But anyways, I came home and I learned how to edit. And I learned how to take the tweets and insert them. And I got, I got the video done. I figured out how to insert the tweets. I did a couple smaller test videos. That went well. I then did the entire video. A little bit of scripted, a little bit unscripted. <clears throat> And to date, that is the best performing video I have. Thank you very much. Um, and then I got everything all sorted out. And I it took me about an hour and a half. Now consider this is the first video I've actually edited. I actually put an intro and an outro to um, that was unique. Well, there's one other. But this one I actually put stuff in the video that was not from me. It was from uh, screenshots from uh, Twitter. So I did that. And I managed to get the uh, screenshots from Twitter imported into the program. I managed to get them lined up to when I needed them. And then I realized the video and the audio is about two and a half seconds out. Well, now I'm fixated. Fuck, it 
it's not working. Um, if it wasn't for the, the exceptionally amazing and brilliant young woman that I'm dating, um, who basically dragged me away from the computer after listen, listening to me swear um, and, and curse and say bad words um, and really bad words, um, yeah, she just had to drag me away. I'm glad, she, grateful that she did. Um, cause my, I wanted to get it out now, but I wanted it to be perfect or good. I realized that the editing software I have, that's not going to be a reality in some cases, but I was too focused to get it done. Um, there are times after a stroke, at least in my experience, and some of you stroke folk out there might recognize this, you get so frustrated on a task, you get fixated on the task. Uh, and you get fixated on the task because you want to make it look good, right? You want to you want to be able to perform <clears throat> on a quote unquote normal level, right? So, yeah, it's uh, that was difficult, but I put it down. Um, I waited a couple of days. I went back and I re-edited it. I came home from work and I was reinvigorated and I was in a good headspace and I watched probably watched about six six or seven videos uh, on YouTube uh, from people on how to do the audio editing and then I just played with it and, ev and eventually I came to a realization you are there either gonna have to bin what you've done and start afresh or you're gonna fix it I don't know which but either way the solution will either be record a new one or you'll fix the current one well I managed to fix the current one is the audio completely perfect I don't know you tell me but I released it, and we will discuss that video in another video. I'm going to do that in a while. <clears throat> However, that being said, my return to work process has had many challenges. My return to work process has had many stumbles. My return to work process has had many achievements, right? Um, and I need to thank a few people. Um, And I'm going to do that. Uh, one night, I'm going to ha I'm having friends out at a pub here in Aurelia, and we're going to go out and just have a couple sociable drinks and just celebrate the fact that I'm back to work full time, and go on from there. So I can recognize people that have been supportive, been beneficial, have been there for me, right? People that have taken the time to be there, right? Um, so. That being said, the the seventh week had its challenges, right? Because now you're there seven hours a day. You're there enough time for a lunch. It's actually almost like a full shift. It was difficult at times. It re really, really was. Um, what what was difficult about it? Unfortunately, the only thing that's truly certain about stroke recovery is uncertainty. Every day is kind of like a bits and bites. Every day is a little bit of a different handful. Um, but by far and large, it's getting better. It is getting easier. There are still difficult days, yes. Um, I try to remind myself the only easy day was yesterday. The only better day will be tomorrow, regardless of what today is. Right? Regardless of what today is, the only easy day was yesterday, because that is over. The only de better day is tomorrow, because that hasn't happened yet. <clears throat> so... On that note, I'm going to end this video on Return to Work Week 7, and I am going to do something else. So, if you happen to have been watching my channel, and you've been enjoying it, uh, and you yourself, or you happen to know someone that's going through their own post-stroke journey, please like, share, subscribe, hit the little bell, the little dingy dingy ding to get the immediate notifications. Um, I'm not going to tell you to turn off ad block because that would be so Matt mundane. Is that a necro reference? I don't know. Anyways, moving on. Um, Please leave your ad block in whatever position you want. Um, but, you know, please like, share, subscribe, share with your friends. <clears throat> and if you happen to notice either in yourself or someone around you, the signs or symptoms of a stroke, someone that appears befuddled, right? They're unable to maintain their balance. They appear confused. Someone who's having eye or vision problems. They, they can't see out of one eye. They can't move their eyes to a certain position. Uh, they see in grayscale. They only see like a little hole in the wall kind of vision. Um, they have facial droop. They have... Um, the inability to raise both arms equally effectively at all. They can't smile equally effectively or at all. Um, 
they have slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context. They have general body weakness, weakness on one side, or have the ability to stand unaided. Please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.